<laughs> Say hi. Say hi. Oh, where'd Daddy go? Oh, that's a good idea. You want your favorite toy? There you go. Oh, we're all set now. No big deal. <laughs> 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 uh, so. Yes. So they they always let two parents in and they I mean they had chairs that you could you could sleep there if you wanted to or if you needed to. Um and we did see some parents doing that in the NICU cuz she was kind of in because she wasn't as sick as the younger some of the younger babies. She was kind of in a pod um kind of situation. So you could see them doing that and it was just we would sit and we would stay with her, but it's like, okay, well, we need rest too, and we're not gonna get rest if we stay here all night. We do have to go home, you know. And then you do, then you worry because you're away, and if something, like if something was happening, they needed us to be there, it's not, okay, I can be right there. It's, well, give me an hour, give her so some traffic. Um, so that was certainly really scary in the beginning. Um, was that, um, but they were, they, I mean, you could have, you could have two, as long as it was only parents. So the two parents could be in the NICU. And then for, I think for the NICU, because it's also RSV season when she was born, it's kind of like what they're used to with precautions, because when you go into the NICU, you not only have to wash, hand sanitize, you have to wash your hands up to your elbows with, chlorhexidine, um, like a surgical scrub, and then use hand sanitizer, and then you can go in. Um, and you can only bring certain things in. So like we could bring a cooler bag that had like a snack or, um, you know, or breast milk for her or whatnot. And what was it like when you're in the NICU and you're watching her, you kind of touched on the bread. What was it like seeing her just there in the pod? It was a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, it, I mean, there's obviously the joy and the amazement that she's here, she's alive, she's actually with us. Um, and then there, there's all the fear, the being scared, being helpless, not being able to do anything. And the, the most that you could do was sit there and just touch her and, and hold her little hand. And so, the, but I, I think what got us through a lot of it, it was just focusing on more of, she's here. Yeah. She, she's actually here because we've had the losses before. And so we actually yep. had her here. Yeah. And she, um, so we've had two stillborn twins um, at that hospital um, and a miscarriage earlier. And then the, when you hear that this was a complication in the beginning, I, that everything just kind of comes to mind, right? Oh yeah, Absolutely. oh yeah. Well, and that's where it's, it's amazing what staff can do in any given place. You know, clearly we've talked about how wonderful everybody was here and the same thing with, you know, with hospital staff is they can make or break your experience in those kind of situations. And they actually have a program where one of the nurse managers, even with COVID, took personal time to do like a tour and whatnot ahead of time to show you how things would be different and kind of that everybody knew, you know, that this is a situation that, you know, that let's make this as comfortable, you know, and as calm as possible. And ironically, that tour happened the day before she was born. <laughs> so the nurse manager came in on a Sunday because she was born on a Monday and did it with us on a Sunday. And <laughs> And she had said to me, you know, if something happens and it's not the day that you're scheduled, text me. And we and I, we texted her the next morning as we were going over there, and she did. She made sure she had talked to the nurses and kind of they knew what was going on. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so it just, it was. And I think the communication between the hospitals and Ronald McDonald and having things set up and, you know, and then double checking things and, asking about any food allergies or any special mm -hmm. circumstances and whatnot, you know. 
all of that. At any point, did you, even before you talked to the, um, the lady at the hospital, did you ever think, oh, maybe we should get a hotel here? No, I, I like uh, we. Th same thing with the hospital bag. We, we were didn't. Very yeah, we didn't pack a hospital bag because it's it's one of those things that you kind you almost wait till the last minute to get things going when you've had losses. Um, so it was kind of like, no, this isn't. You know, it definitely isn't going to happen for a little bit, and then it did. It was like, hold on, <laughs> we are not prepared for this at all. Um, but we did, we had this community that helped us that and get us prepared so that we did when, you know, when she, we had things that we hadn't purchased and, you know, by being up here, we were able to go to Target is right down the road and, you know, the night before she was discharged, go and get the stuff that we needed, you know. <laughs> So when she came home, the doctors actually had said to us, you know, she's doing better today. If you want, you can bring her home this afternoon. And we looked at each other like, in like three hours? We don't have anything at home. We can't bring this kid home today. So we had said that we were like, can we bring him home tomorrow? Because the other thing that's really scary when they're in the NICU is they're on all these monitors that show their oxygen and, you know, you see oxygen levels dipping and all the monitors go off. Like everything's beeping at any given time. And it, it's scary, but it's also comforting because then you can watch it go back up. So they had said, well, you'll have this comfort level when we discharge her because you'll see her oxygen holding steady. And it was, and she definitely was ready to go home and she did well when she was home, but you still see it fluctuate and that's really scary. So when we did bring her home, it was one of those things was like, okay, she doesn't have this monitor on her. She doesn't have this monitor. Like, is she okay? Is she breathing? You know, is that little bit of mucus, you know, just because babies have a lot of mucus or did her pneumothorax come back? Um, but also I think it was nice to just, to be home and to have even just that quiet. To be home, to be, to be the ones in charge too. True. Because now it was scary but fun and exciting at the same time of, okay, now we can actually care for her. We, we can try our hand at this versus just watching and learning from the nurses. And that was actually a whole other good part is we got to actually see how to do certain things, how to, I mean, with bathing her, with, you know, how to properly, you know, pat her back for the, to get some mucus up and everything else. So it, it made things yeah. easier for us to go home. So after 10 days, you get to finally hold her. Mm -hmm. What was that like? That was probably one of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> she, uh, you, you hold her and she, she's opening her eyes some, not constantly, she's sleeping most of the time, but uh, as soon as you pick her up, she looks up at you and you're just like, you melt. You, you just, you're like, yep, I'm already wrapped around your little pinky. It's, there's, <laughs> there's no hope in it. Uh, if, like, it, it was heaven. It was absolute heaven. Yes. And so when y'all walked into the house, and it just felt like, did it feel like that? Or, did it feel, or the fear? Um, I think probably a mix of both. I think mostly relief because you know if they let us bring her home that she's okay, mm -hmm. you know? And that she's she's gone through what she's you know she's recovered and that she's okay to be at home. Um, and then it was then you got to have the snuggles and there wasn't you know you you got to fully take care of her and spend that time with her. Um, whereas you know even once they're off the main tubes and whatnot, you still you know, you don't feel like you can just sit there all day holding your baby. And you certainly could, but it doesn't, you know, it's not, it's not the same as being at home. Um, so that was, I think. Well, and you got home and you actually got to have good family private time. Yes, yes, yes. And she got to meet her aunt, 
when she got home, so that was exciting and, and her started. And yes, yes, because we were because she was in the NICU for so long. We were we would FaceTime with different family members to introduce her. Um, so once she was home, then family was able to come and see her and whatnot. So and she has yes, she yes, we have two dogs. Yeah, so. we're in the first I think it was three days or so, we, we took home one of the baby blankets to, that had her smell on it to the dogs so they could start getting used to the yes. smell and knowing what she was. <laughs> and how she with the dogs. She loves the dogs and the Absolutely. dogs love her. She is, they, you'll be feeding her her bottle and dog will come around the corner and she's instantly distracted and just smiling and laughing at them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they do. They tolerate her really well. She's she started pulling on their ears and petting them. And one's a lab, and the other one's a beagle. And they're both pretty calm dogs, thankfully. So she's, um, yeah, she's gonna be chasing them pretty oh, soon, absolutely. I think. And Cindy's gonna be a big sister. She is. She is. We're having a little boy in October shortly after her first birthday. <laughs> so there'll be lots of craziness in the house this fall. <laughs> yes. Our hands will be very, very full. She's going to be a great big sister. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We already she, know that. Well, yes. She's a tough little girl. And what she's already been through, and you can see her now, she definitely is. She um, she's really strong, and she'll she'll pull herself up, and she she'll be really happy. And then if she doesn't want something, she'll let you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then she's easygoing at the same time. Well, for she's the already most part. telling her little brother who's who's going to be in charge. Yes, yes, they kick each other. <laughs> yes, so she'll she'll sit on my lap and she'll hit my belly and then he actually kicks back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, we're so glad she's doing well now. Yeah. Just that she's, I mean, sh she stays strong and healthy and, you know, I want her to feel that she can do whatever, you know, whatever she wants to do, that nothing's, you know, outside of her reach, that if she, if she perseveres at something that she can get it, you know, and I think with her Nick, you say she showed even that early, as silly as it probably sounds, that she's got that kind of drive and ambition because she did she just she just kept fighting um yes absolutely yes one of the first onesies she had said like little fighter or something <laughs> which definitely she is <laughs> she she is. She's usually pretty easy going. Are you pretty chill, baby? She is. Unless she's mad about something. She kind of mad there's, or hungry. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's easy she to gets tell. Hungry, yes. You know that's the wrong end of that, sweetie pie. That's her, her new her new favorite thing. I know, is, she, it is. She likes she the likes clip, the clip side of it, which is why they're always closed if they're not attached to her. Would you rather that instead? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Can we take this one back? Switch it out. There you go. I went bye bye. Love it. Yeah. yeah. You went back to work. I'm not sure now. Telework. So I get to on days that I telework. Um, I get to see her first thing in the morning before I start work. And then when I take my lunch, I usually can see her for a little bit. So that's been nice. Um, and she, I mean, Brett is just the perfect person to be home with her. He really is right now. So he he's so good at engaging with her and doing the developmental things. And, you know, 
he's just, he is, he's so good at that. Um, so it's, it's really worked out well for us. Um, so it, <laughs> it, it depends. She'll, right now she's getting up sometime around 7, 7.30. So that, that's nice. It was 5.30 for a little bit. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I can sleep in. This is wonderful. Uh, but so on days that she goes, I get up with her, make her bottles, help get her off to work. Um, and then she gets up. She typically, depending on how she is, she'll get a bottle first and then free play or we'll go into free play with all our toys and everything and uh, we have a little playpen that we put her in with all our toys and pianos and anything and everything else uh, so she can learn then bottle then that from probably eight ish to ten ish um, depending on, on how cranky she is sometimes she has her moods uh, but she loves going for a walk so we'll go for a walk um, I actually will probably three or four times a week we'll go down to the pond and we'll just I'll actually go fishing with her and, and show her fish and different things that are in the pond and she just gets big old smiles and she's like what is that <laughs> oh yeah she likes being outside a lot oh. and she likes the water so you'll yes, bring her to the pool sometimes the so and that's usually like an afternoon thing we'll do you can really one nap a day she gets takes about two hours of a nap we lost the we second just lost nap, the second nap. Yeah, it, it was heartbreaking. She does. Yes. She does. That's Thankfully. what we. That's what we have to keep saying. It's okay. She doesn't do her second nap. Yeah, we'll go. We got, got a pool. What? Quarter mile away. Yeah. So we'll go down to the pool. It's got some sunshades and stuff like that. So she she does pool walking and swimming and everything else. 